six years ago when I got my pellet stove used, the control panel was broken. But I needed to use it right away to heat my house. And so I came up with kind of this little ingenious system of how to run a pellet stove without a control panel. And we ran it that way for a couple weeks. Huh, honey? Oh, don't you dare. Okay. I won't put that in the video. So we're going shopping. We're going to go down to Home Depot and we're going to buy the stuff to do it. So in case you have a broken pellet stove controller and you want to build your own controller, you can do it too. Okay. Alright, so here we are uh, wandering into Home Depot in uh, any town, USA. This is your Home Depot. And we are going to find all the stuff that we need to uh, build a pellet stove control box. And we're going to buy some pellets too because I'm down to my last two bags and they're in my stove. Alright, here we go. This will be exciting. Welcome to Electric Dimmer Land. As you see, we have many different types of options of different dimmers here, ranging from all different types of prices. This is the traditional slide dimmer that you use on your house. This is kind of more of a style that's like more on a pellet stove. And since they are ugly as sin um, and nobody wants them in their house, they're incredibly cheap. My Home Depot, where are they here? $5.49 versus some of these other ones around $22. So I'm going to grab this one here and I'm going to grab three of these bad boys. And yeah, it looks like one of these over here. Okay. I think they're all the same. So anyway, that's a start. We got three dimmer controls to begin with. One of the things I noticed with my uh, dimmer control here is it doesn't come with the uh, faceplate here. And I have a uh, small child, he's about two years old. So I would want to have um, one of these uh, faceplates, either uh, one of these sizes or any one of these sizes here uh, for my dimmer control here. It's gonna make it look really nice. Um, not necessarily something you have to have, but in my case, it's something that I'm going to choose to have. So here we go on some faceplates. You get the right ones here and they're only 25 cents a piece. This uh, project requires uh, some wiring. It requires an uh, electrical plug and a few other things. You've got a couple options here. Um, this is probably the cheapest one. $2.58 for 12 feet of wiring. Um, it doesn't have a ground on it. Mm, and so you might decide to go with one like this, you know, $12 for 9 feet, or actually, here's 12 feet for $7.98. Um, whichever you prefer, it's just a temporary thing anyway. So, uh, well, maybe long term, but you want to decide anywhere from 3 to $8 on your wiring. You want to get about 12 feet of wiring. Um, that should be plenty to do what we're going to do here. There are a lot of different types of wire connectors that you could use. Uh, some people prefer to use like this slip-on uh, crimp style wire connector. There's a bunch of different types. I actually prefer wire nuts um, because I don't need any sort of crimp tool to uh, use them. And based upon price as well, $1.97, I'm going to go with the wire nuts. So this is a uh, three gang, well, it's a switch box, basically. This is where I'm going to mount all uh, my dimmers into. And so we're going to have the wiring coming out uh, different ports and points and stuff here, which uh, means I'm probably going to have to go get a different plate to go over my switches. But um, $3.85, they'll all mount right into there. So I got a little smarter with uh, my cover plate here. Rather than doing three cover plates, I'm going to do just this one cover plate. And that's going to fit really well with my uh, switch box here. It'll fit right over the top and mount on there, and then each of these will fit inside here really nicely. All right, so this is starting to come together pretty well. So one thing I know about uh, my current setup is that my motors all have this style uh, spade connector on them, and that's not really coming into focus very well. So um, I would prefer to have something that had like a plastic cover on it, like these ones here, to slip over them, uh, but those aren't going to work. Um, so what I'm pretty much left with is this style connector that I can use with my uh, my current setup. So I'll probably have to use those and just put some tape over the top of them here. But uh, for two dollars and thirty nine cents. So it looks like at this point I got just about everything that I need to uh, make this project happen. It's actually uh, not that many items, less than I uh, thought it was going to be. For some reason I thought it was going to be more stuff. 
We'll figure out what the price of all of it is going to be here in just a minute, but um, I'm going to go grab about six bags of pellets because that's what fits in the shopping cart and in the trunk of my car. And uh, we'll go home and start putting some of this together. All right. Okay, so it may not look like a whole lot, but these are all the parts that I need to um, make my pellet stove work without a control box. Grand total was $33.34. And uh, this is going to be really exciting. Uh, so I got a little stumped here, so I uh, engaged the uh, uh, the s uh, superior uh, creativity of a two-year-old. And I um, always advise having a two-year-old to uh, help you assemble um, any sort of thing like this because they seem to get it much easier than adults do. Isn't that so, boy? Yep, okay. So I've got, um, this is the uh, electrical wire coming into my uh, box here. This is the, uh, the plug end. All right, so this end here is where you want to plug, and this is the wires coming through. These are the, the dimmer switches, or this is a dimmer switch, and you'll notice that it's got the, the, the two wires going on it here. So for each of these, one of these is going to wire to um, this end here, and then the other is going to go out to the motor. Okay, so one one wire goes to one of these ends, and then the other goes out to the motor. I'll I'll have a video or include this on the video here. So um, just your step by step reference. Hey, where'd you go? Deserting. Glad to see you're back on the job. Okay. So, at this point, I'm going to take a, a moment to give my disclaimer. Uh, my disclaimer is that I am not a licensed electrician. I only know how to fix pellet stoves and um, learn how to do that through trial and error. Um, this is uh, something that is potentially dangerous. You can be electrocuted. You can start fires. Um, you probably should not do this. And if you do do this, I am not responsible for anything that happens to you or your house through the process of doing this. And as you can see, I'm under the supervision of a very creative two-year-old, um, which I recommend if you, uh, you know, always uh, do any creative work under a two-year-old, but do not let them touch anything. It has to do with electricity, especially when it's plugged in. Okay, that being said, this may look like a little bit of a mess now, but there is a logic to it. Um, this is one of the uh, power lines going that would be going out to electricity. And this is uh, connected to... Uh, each of or one wire off of each of our dimmer switches over here okay so that's one side the other side of the power coming in is going to one side of each of our three wires going out to uh, which will go out to our motors the uh, other side of those wires each of these three right here are going to the other side of our dimmer switches so there's one, two, and three um, wires set up there. So main power uh, going to one side of the dimmer switches, um, other side of the dimmer switches going to each of the three wires going out to the stove, and then we have our neutral wire here that's going to the other side of the three wires and also to our main power supply. Um, if you don't understand this or don't get this concept then probably should stop now um, but uh, if or go back and review this part of the video a few times okay best of luck okay so to try to make this a little bit more or less confusing for you I put together a um, very crude wiring diagram here of what we just did in the box so if this is our plug right here um, the one side of the plug is going into the box and it going over to here and it's connecting to um, each of these motor each of these motors here. So you've got this one going here, and then it's going out to this one right here, and then it's also going out to this one right here. Okay? And I know these kind of jump across each other, but one, two, and three, all connected to this one line here. Xavier's just putting the finishing touches on the box over there, as you can see. Okay. So then you've got the other side of the power line going up here 
and connecting to one of the wires coming out of each of these uh, dimmer controls. Okay, so that's the second connection. And then each of these dimmer controls is then going over to the other side of each of these motors, like so. Okay, so that's the um, wiring diagram. Okay, our system is live and ready to go now. Uh, we have our uh, control module here with the uh, wires going out to our, our different motors here on the stove. We have it plugged in and it's ready to go. Um, the difference that you're going to have with this here is that the exhaust fan and the convection fan um, are used to being run on speed controls. The auger motor, however, is not used to being run on a speed control. It's used to be run on a timer, so it turns on and off, on and off. So when I turn it on here, it's just going to run constantly. Now, uh, auger motors aren't designed to be used with speed controls, so I can slow it down a little bit. Right about there is about how slow I can have it. So the stove is always going to run on kind of a medium to high heat level with it set up this way. But if it's your only option, it's better than nothing. So I'm going to light the fire here and we're going to kick it on and see how it flies. And there you have it. We uh, have a running pellet stove at this point. Um, working off our small control box here. We've got a uh, good flame and... Um, just kind of dialing it in now uh, to, to get it running correctly here. I can actually have it run this way. Um, I have to, you know, dial in my controls here to figure out where, where things need to be set up at, um, you know, fuel rate wise and air rate wise to be able to get this thing into, uh, you know, kind of a decent um, running pattern. But if this was an emergency and I had lost my uh, control board, then I would be able to heat my house this way. I would not recommend leaving your home with it set up like this. Uh, this is something that should be monitored. Um, I wouldn't leave it running overnight. Um, but it does work. Uh, this is without a control board. This is with just a, a simple setup here. So anyway, good luck with this. Um, if this is helpful for you, I'm, I'm glad. and. Um, Keep your house warm.